Hi friends, welcome to Open Studies YouTube channel. This is part 26 in Azure Databricks playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to create a secret scope in Azure Databricks, which is backed by Databricks backend. In our past videos, we have discussed about what is secret scope. We have also discussed about like Azure Key Vault backed secret scope. And this video, we are going to focus on Databricks backed secret scope. And also, I think last video or before last video, I discussed about how to install Databricks CLI and how to configure the Databricks CLI with your workspace. So please watch all my previous videos. Why? Because the videos are in the sequence order. When you watch them in the same order, you will get most out of the every video. So in this video, we are going to use the Azure Databricks CLI to interact with our Databricks workspace and create the Databricks backend or Databricks backend secret scopes. So firstly, if you don't know what is secret scope, I will encourage you to watch my previous video or for your high level idea, think like secret scope is one account which will be created inside your Databricks workspace and inside that secret scope, you can create multiple secrets. Let's assume secret one, secret two like that. And inside the every secret, you can store your passwords or your credentials, everything. Why we have to do all this? Because in our notebook, if you don't want to expose your uh, secrets or credentials uh, manually typing them, so this is the best way. Keep your secrets inside the secret scope of the secret and then refer from that. We have discussed this in our previous videos as well. So please watch them and then come back to this video. So now in this video, as I said, we are going to focus on Databricks backed secret scope. So what is Databricks backed secret scope? It is a secret scope which will be stored inside the workspace database itself and that database is encrypted. You cannot see what is the database and how to uh, open the database. All these things you cannot do. Technically, if you imagine, so Databricks workspace will have its own database, which is encrypted database. Inside the database, this is secret scopes and the secrets, whatever you create here, they will get stored there actually. Okay. And these are the couple of commands which I listed here that will help you to create a secret scope, which is backed by Databricks and also how to create a secret inside the secret scope and how to list the available secret scopes or available secrets inside a secret scope, how to delete any secret scope which you created. All these commands are listed here. Let's not worry more about this. I'm going to practically show you this. So let me go to my uh, workspace. Let me go to browser. So this is my workspace uh, and this is my notebook called Mount Notebook, which I created in our previous videos. So inside this notebook, what I did is actually so let me clear this cell outputs of every cell. So this is the code which I used in our previous videos where I am explaining about the mount point. So what is mount point? Taking any external storage and connecting that external storage with your Databricks file system is a mount point. Once you connect or attach your external storage with the Databricks file system, from that moment, you can access the files inside that storage as if you were accessing the files in a local system. So all this is I, again, I discussed in our previous videos, right? So please watch them. So now let me go to Azure portal. Uh, I have a storage account called Blob Storage Machine. So let's assume this storage account I want to attach with my Databricks workspace. So in that case, I can use this mount command and I can provide a path of the location of the storage which I want to mount. In this case, if you see, this is the storage account name and this is the container name. So that means the entire container is getting mapped or mounted to the Databricks file system and whenever you create a mount point you have to give a name to it so I, I given this name slash mnt slash blob storage this is my mount point name and then under the extra configurations you I am using account key here you can see a fs dot azure dot account key then storage account name then the blob dot core dot windows dot net and here if you see this key is a account key of the storage account if I go to storage account if I go to access keys and then if I hit this, you, usually you will see show keys here. So when you hit the show keys, you will see these keys. So I taken this key and hard coded that key in my code to create a mount point. So let me execute this by hitting the shift enter to execute this cell. So this cell should create a mount point. The moment the mount point get created, we can access the data inside that mount point or inside that storage account as if you are accessing a local files. So let's wait for the command to execute here. Command executed successfully. Now, if you if I go to storage and if I go to containers, let me go to containers 
and uh, I, I mounted this entire sample container to the Databricks file system, right? You can see the entire sample container, right? There is no extra path. So that means the entire container is mounted. So inside this container, there is a file called employees.csv file. Let me open this file and then let me try to see the data inside this file and then try to read the data of this file in the notebook as well. So if I see there are three rows, one and there is another row called header row also. So now let me go back to my notebook. So here what I am doing, spark.read.csv function will help you to read any CSV file. And if you observe the path, I just used my mount point name. So from here to here, this mount point name will help you to point to your container. Why? Because, why? because container is the one which I mounted. And then after that, the remaining path. If you see inside the container, directly we have the employees.csv file. So simply I used the slash employees.csv file. And also I mentioned first row is a header. Now if I execute this code, it should give me the data from that CSV file, even though we haven't used the actual path of the storage account. See, I'm able to see the data. How this magic is happening? Because of this, because of this mount point. Now the question is, if you see this credential information or this account key information is hard coded here. This is not the best practice or the best way to do it. It can lead to many security leakages, right? So someone can take this account key and they can take the account name and container name and other details and they can very easily connect with your storage account and they can delete the data, they can upload the data, whatever they want to do. They can do it very easily, right? So to avoid these things only, there is a concept called secret scopes. So what you will do, you will take out this secret from here and you will store it inside a secret scope. And then using that secret scope name and secret name, you will refer it here, right? That is what we discussed in our previous videos as well. So let's continue to do the same. So in this video, as I said, we will be focusing on creating a Databricks backed secret scope, right? So for that, let's try to go to our Databricks command line. So inside this command line, so always you need to make sure you, uh, you have a Databricks CLI. So if you want to check it, simply type this Databricks, then space hyphen hyphen help. If this command is executing successfully and it is giving you, and this command is giving you all the commands inside that CLI, then you are good. Databricks CLI is installed. If not, you have to install it. How to do that and how to configure your workspace with the Databricks CLI? I already discussed that in my previous video where I explained you how to install the Databricks CLI and how to configure it with your workspace. So now, to inside this Databricks CLI, there is a command called secrets, right? So inside this utility, using this utility, you can create a secrets or secret scopes. If you want to list the secret scopes, available even that is possible let's try to use a help command on top of this secrets utility and see what available commands are there so databricks then here i am going to use secrets then space help hyphen hyphen help. let me hit enter so this is going to give me all the commands so this command right what i executed is this command this command is going to give me all the commands available inside the secrets utility now, if you closely observe, there is something called list scopes. This is going to list down all the scopes, scopes available inside my workspace. So let me use that command. So here, inside the secrets, so there is a command called list scopes, right? So simply let me type this list scopes here and let me hit enter. So now let's wait for the execution to complete here. See, it is giving me only, there is only one scope which is backed by Azure Keyword. And this is scope we created in our previous video. So now in this video, we are going to create a secret scope, which will be backed by Databricks. So to do that, what we have to do, we have to use this Databricks command inside that. Let me use the secrets. And then if, if you see the help command, whatever I executed on top of the secrets utility, there is something called create scope. So this create scope command will help you to create a scope, which is backed by Databricks. And now let me use this create then scope and then on top of this command i am using a help command to see what parameters we have to supply to it and if you see you have to supply scope this parameter and then for that parameter supply your scope name whatever the secret scope name you want to keep supply that there so let me try to do that as well so let me scroll down here so here i am going to use scope parameter to the scope parameter i am going to supply like maybe demo scope okay let me hit enter. 
Now it should fail. Why? Because let, let's wait for the error. If you see here, it says a bad request and it says like you are not a premium tire. Okay. So the, what this error means is what will happen behind the scenes whenever you create a secret scope, it will be created with a managed permissions of the creator. For example, if I am creating a secret scope, then I should be like a uh, in a position to manage that secret. So that is the default setting or default ACLS or account level accesses what uh, Databricks will give. But for that to happen, your workspace should be premium type. Since my workspace is not premium plan one, that is the reason this is giving this error. So if your workspace is not a premium type, then you need to make sure whenever you try to create a secret scope at that time, add this flag, initial manage principal users. What this flag will do? It will give access to the all the users of the workspace to manage that secret scope. So here, what I need to do is, I need to use, if you see the slide also, I use the same thing. So let me go to slide. So here you can see after the scope name, use this hyphen hyphen initial manage principal then users. Okay. So let me use that hyphen hyphen initial then uh, hyphen manage then hyphen then principal principal then users okay so let me hit enter this now the secret scope will be created okay so there is an error so i did some spelling mistake it looks so it says there is no option called this one so let me correct this let me take the command from my notebook so here i already typed the command let me copy this and let me go to cli right click so i pasted the command databricks secrets secret create scope then scope name then initial manage principal users so let me hit enter here so the moment this command executes we should see our secret scope created okay so let's wait for the execution to complete here see execution completed no error now let's try to list down the scopes so this command will be helpful to list down the scopes right so let me hit enter so this time i should see a secret scope which is backed by databricks as well and that secret scope name is demo scope see it shows a demo scope and which is backed by databricks so that means now we successfully created a secret scope which is backed by databricks so now scope is created as i said before once the scope is created you need to create a secret also for that secret you need to give a name and inside the secret you need to store your password right or you need to store your account key in our case so let me do that so so if you go to presentation to create a secret inside a secret scope you need to use this command databricks secrets then put scope give the scope name and then key give the key name so you, if you don't remember also always you need to try to use this uh, help uh, command on top of your commands or utilities so here databricks secrets then if i use help then inside that you will see something called put puts a secret inside the scope right so what you need to do after that simply use the utility called or command called put and then on top of put simply use help once again to know like what parameters you need to pass and if you see you can pass inside the put you can pass a scope name and then you can pass the uh, so let's do that also so so inside the put then for the scope parameter pass your scope name so my scope name is demo scope right and then on top of that let's try to use a help function once again so this will tell you what you can do further see after scope i can put my key name as well so let me use this so what i can do here key then key name maybe i want to keep my key name as my block okay so let me hit enter so this is going to create a secret inside the secret scope and don't worry why this notepad is open so this is the way uh, the things works for the databricks backed secret scopes here you need to paste the credential so if i go my code let me take my account key here control c so this account key you have to paste it inside this notepad which automatically open and then hit the control s to save this notepad and simply close this notepad and then go back to your uh, c now the execution completed here that means now my secret is successfully stored inside a secret scope called demo scope so this is the secret scope name 
and this is the secret name so with the help of this secret scope name and with the secret name we can access our account key why because inside this secret name only my account key got saved so if you want to know like what are the what and all the available uh, secrets inside the secret scope you can use this command so let me use this here so data bricks then secrets then list then hyphen hyphen scope then give a scope name so my scope name is demo scope right demo scope so it is going to list down the all the secrets inside this secret scope so if you see right now there is only one secret inside this secret scope called demo scope okay so now it is done so we created a secret scope and we placed a secret also inside the secret scope now let's go to our code so this time here i don't want to use this a uh, hard coded account key so what i will be doing i will be trying to access the secret scope which i just created and inside the secret scope whatever the secret i have so that i will try to access thereby i can get my account key so for that what i will do let me go to my presentation firstly we just know created a mount point with this name right so let's try to rename this mount point to maybe slash mount slash blob storage one and here to get a secret from a secret scope you need to use dbutils dot secrets dot get function in the get function firstly you have to pass your secret scope name so my secret scope name is demo scope and then the secret name my secret name is my blob right if you go and see the cli so this is the secret name and this is the secret scope name now let's go back to our browser and let me hit and shift enter to execute this command and let's see whether the mount point will get created successfully or not this time great see command executed successfully now if i execute this shell right which will access the employees.cc file it should run successfully see without any, any errors it is running to make you clear let's try to read any another file let me go to maybe data folder and inside the data folder also there may be some csv file so there is there is also a csv file called employees.cc file right so let me go to this file and let me see what data we have inside the data folder see it is a similar data only so let me make this six rows for our understanding whether we are getting a correct output or not let me save these changes so save changes are saved now so now let's go back to my uh, notebook so inside a mount point i want to take data folder and inside the data folder employees.cc file then display the data frame so let me hit shift enter this time i should see the six rows here see that means using this mount point i am oh sorry so our mount point name is to blob storage one right so this is a previous mount point which i shown in the beginning of the video so let me use a different mount point name here and now let me hit shift enter button to make sure this command executes successfully or not see command executed successfully even with this mount point name also and this mount point name created by having a secret inside the secret scope and reading that value using this command here right so this is how we can create a data bricks back to secret scope very easily so if you want to delete a secret scope which you created then use this command data bricks secrets then delete scope then scope scope name so you can try that one as well uh, as a homework to see how to delete a secret scope okay i am not going to explain that so i hope you got an idea about the data bricks back to secret scopes and how to create a secret scope how to create a secret how to store value inside the secret and everything Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever I add videos. Thank you so much.